Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining the uh, UAE session on the approach towards accelerating the space economy. Uh, my name is Nasser Al Rashidi. I'm the Director of Space Policy and Regulation at the UAE Space Agency. I'm uh, working on developing the uh, space regulations, uh, space policy, the space strategy, and also uh, the director of the Global Space Industry Accelerator Program. I have here with me uh, 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 engineer Fatma Shamsi. Fatma, if you would like to introduce yourself, please. Um, good afternoon. This is Fatima Shamsi. I am the acting head of space regulations and policy. Um, the main focus of my day-to-day uh, -day job is on uh, developing and the, of the governance models of the Space 2030 strategy which is a sectorial strategy, including 71 initiatives that will be implemented within the coming 10 years. Thank you, Fatma. And we also uh, have the pleasure to have Dr. Fathiya Asharji. Dr. Fathiya, please, if you introduce yourself. Dr. Fathiya. Okay. Okay. So, hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Fathiya Asharji. I'm a senior space legislative specialist working on the uh, policy and regulation department with Nasser Rashti. I worked with Nasser and the other team on developing our law as well as uh, several regulations. And now I will pass it to Hamla. Thank Thank you. Thank you, Nasser and Dr. Fathiya. My name is Hamda al Hosani, and I have joined the UAE Space Agency in 2019 as a Space Activities Licensing Executive and the Policies and Regulation Directory. I have a bachelor degree in Mechanical Engineering, and I'm currently working on the authorizations of space activities and on drafting and implementation of a number of regulatory procedures, including the authorizations, third-party liability insurance, exports and imports, and I'm also supporting in space investments and startups. Thank you, Hamda. And uh, last but not least, uh, actually, uh, Ali El uh, Gabaga, please, if you can introduce yourself. Ali? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ali Al Gardaka. I'm a master's student at Sorbonne in Abu Dhabi. Uh, as, my, uh, as part of my master's, I'm uh, interning with the Space Academy, uh, sorry, Space uh, Agency, uh, for one month. and. Uh, at the Department of Space Policy and Regulations. Uh, as of now, I'm now uh, volunteering with the, uh, with the uh, Space uh, Agency uh, to continue on, uh, to continue with my previous tasks and uh, the export and control uh, and import control. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ali. And, uh... Last but not least, Hanan Khaldi from Crypto Labs. Hanan, please. Thank you, Nasser. Uh, I'm the business development manager at uh, Crypto Labs. I'm a business consultant and a professional entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship lead. I manage uh, different technology accelerators and uh, business hubs for uh, innovative high potential startups across the MENA region. I have over 10 years of experience in corporate innovation, business development, and program management. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hanan. And uh, thank you all. This uh, session is organized in partnership between UAE Space Agency and uh, Crypto Labs. And uh, in our agenda today, we'll have a, a, a general introduction uh, on the global space economy as well as the UAE Space Agency role. And then we're going to talk about the UAE Space Strategy 2030 as well as the Space Investment Promotion Plan. After that, we are going to uh, talk about uh, the law, the space law, and the 100% foreign ownership in the space companies. After that, we would like to talk about the one-stop shop in terms of uh, operation of space licensing, registration, and export control. And then we're going to introduce the program of GSIA. And then last but not least, we're going to end with uh, talking about the awareness uh, activities that were conducted by the Space Agency, the partnership, and the international collaboration. What we're trying to highlight here in, uh, in brief, the different components that uh, the Space Agency has worked on uh, towards accelerating the space economy uh, growth in the UAE over the past 
uh, five years since the establishment of the space agency. And we'll tackle it from the economic, the strategy, the legislation, the licensing regime, uh, the, you know, the incubation acceleration programs, partnership and awareness and international collaboration. With this, I would like to start with the first part of our session. Um, uh, when we look at the international and the global landscape on the space industry, we have recognized six main global directives in the space industry today, globally. Uh, there are for sure increasing number uh, of players. Uh, today we're talking about more than 70 space agencies. At least 14 are with the space exploration missions that are going to deep space. There are 80 countries today who have launched satellites. Uh, there is uh, for sure a clear interest coming uh, from the uh, private sector uh, and also the developing countries and the uh, least developed countries today, even they are considering some of the uh, utilization of space applications and technologies. Uh, there is a growth in the space economy. 74% uh, of the total space economy is coming from uh, commercial financial return. Uh, there is an average about 9.6% uh, growth rate per year. Uh, there is an uh, increased number of investors just between 2018 and 2019. The private investment has increased of 61.5% just in one year. These are all examples uh, of uh, the growth of interest in space. And uh, there is more collaboration and partnership. It's a clear trend. Uh, partnership at a, uh, uh, let me say, intra-sector level among the different space players. Uh, number uh, also partnership with space and non-space and also international and global partnership. Um, there is uh, also uh, space security and military utilization is increasing and uh, there is a higher quality of uh, the technologies in space. New activities are coming to space like you know, space resources utilization, launching from space, suborbital flights. Now all these growth uh, activities in space are also coming with some challenges in terms of the stability and the safety in the space environment. Uh, debris, uh, frequency, interference, uh, cybersecurity are examples of some threats today that are existing also in the space environment that our countries and key players from the industry, from the government are working together trying to put an active solutions for this. Uh, and when we talk a little bit more in the economic sides, 74%, as mentioned earlier, is coming from the commercial revenues. Uh, between 2000 and 2019, about $28 billion were invested by private investors. Uh, you can see uh, that, uh, yes, the classical, uh, you know, uh, uh, applications are still, uh, you know, um, uh, remain to be of course, a key driver of the, of the space economy, but also you can see the growth uh, that is um, that is uh, almost you could say exponential uh, from the private investment in space. Now, this private investment uh, interest is not only on North America and US. You can see that it's global. Uh, there are 38% increase on the number of private investors in one year between 2018 and 2019. 72% uh, is the increase of non-US investors in one year. As a matter of fact. When we look at uh, uh, the 2019 private investors, two thirds of them came from uh, you know, uh, other countries than the United States. And this is showing the global trend in uh, you know, investing in space and startups. Um, new space, that term of course is, uh, is, the, is becoming a term, of, uh, a term of art in the space economy. Uh, it is, uh, of course, uh, building on the infrastructure, on the success of the classical uh, space, uh, you know, uh, industry and actually taking it to the next level. And it's with time is growing in terms of its contribution to the uh, space economy. Um, you know, international reports shows that between now and 2030, it's almost uh, expected to double the amount of the space economy. It's also, um, uh, you know, widened the, the, the understanding of new space term that it's not just about advancing technologies and system, 
but it's actually also about innovation. It's about entrepreneurship. It's about um, exploring new services, new applications, including merging and converging different uh, ones, but also looking at new business models and partnership. The Space Agency is a federal authority that was established in 2014 by law, and its mandate is to regulate uh, the, and organize the space sector, it's to develop the human capacity and professionals in that sector and to support the R&D and to collaborate and partner at the national and international level and of course to oversee the first exploration, deep space exploration missions by the UAE, the so-called uh, the HOPE probe or the Emirates Mars mission. The main principles of the UAE Space Agency supervision is uh, to assure two key principles. One is to maximize the benefit of space uh, technology, of space applications, of space science, to maximize the benefit basically of our investment into the space program. The second thing is to sustain the growth of the space uh, economy and the space sector in the UAE. Those are the two principles, and we achieve this through our different instruments, as we will see today, today that actually assure transparency, safety, healthy competitions, uh, cooperation and harmonization, uh, economy of scale in terms of, you know, the, the market, uh, you know, access, as well as to trust uh, and, you know, uh, to gain the trust and attractiveness for, uh, you know, the investors, and also to monitor the performance and the learning curve. Uh, with this, I would like to pass it to uh, my colleague, uh, Fatma Ashamsi. Please, Fatma, to introduce us to the UAE National Space Strategy. Thank you, Nasser. So, um, in, 2000, in 2016, the agency launched the National Space Policy, uh, which states clearly the UAE principles and ambitions that it would like to achieve in the space industry. However, it did not give us the house and from that came the need of the National Space Strategy 2030, which was uh, approved and published in 2019. Uh, the main objective of the National Space Strategy is for the UAE to be one of the most pioneering and advanced countries in the field of space. And how are we going to achieve that is through the implementation of the six strategic objectives that are out outlined in the uh, screen. The, uh, uh, the, the main focus would be on uh, uh, First of all, uh, having a competitive and leasing, leading space services. Secondly, on the development of advanced local capacities in space technology on manufacturing and R&D as well. Third is on launching inspiring uh, space scientific and exploration missions. So these are for us as an areas of focus and those areas of focus will be implemented through having a set of uh, enablers and those enablers will, will actually be achieved through a set of initiatives uh, that fall under three strategic objectives, mainly on creating space culture and expertise, promoting effective and uh, local and global uh, partnerships, uh, as well as investment in the space industry. And last but not least is to have this regulatory framework and or uh, regulatory setting uh, that will enable us uh, to reach the goal that we set. Uh, now, all of this uh, will be achieved uh, within the next coming 10 years uh, throughout the implementation of 71 initiatives. And um, when, when focusing on, econ on economy uh, uh, specifically, uh, um, I would give the example of the fifth strategic objective, uh, which has uh, three programs. So uh, through the 10 years, uh, one of the main programs that we will be focusing on and enhancing partnerships in the space sector uh, within, the within the entities that are working in the space sector, as well as the entities that are working in other sectors. Uh, the second program that we will be uh, working on is on increasing financial support and investment attractiveness in the space sector. So we, we will be um, uh, developing policies to promote space investment, uh, we will be developing plans to promote uh, and uh, uh, support campaigns. And the third uh, program will be on supporting innovation and uh, entrepreneurship in the space sector. So we will be focusing on the uh, entrepreneurship aspect and uh, developing the uh, local expertise as well as attracting the pioneering uh, 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 organizations, whether uh, the ones that are existing in the UAE as well as the international ones um, 
to uh, to come to the UAE. And uh, of course, 71 initiatives, uh, many of them uh, will be implemented uh, within a short period of time. So how are we going to ensure the success implementation is through uh, um, several uh, implementation of several tools. Uh, the one that uh, stood up for me and uh, the, the main focus for us as, a, as an agency is the active stakeholder involvement and coordination. So far within uh, 2020, we have more than uh, uh, 30 entities that uh, we are meeting with. Uh, we have more than 100 champions uh, from um, more than 30 entities uh, in the UAE where we are working closely with them on uh, um, expanding the horizon on what could be their contribution in regards to the uh, sustainable growth of, of the space industry. Um, with that, uh, uh, we move to uh, Dr. Rafathi on the regulatory um, aspect of the space uh, industry. Actually, I'm, I'm thinking, Fatma, before we move to the legal aspect, is to talk a little bit about the Space Investment Promotion Plan. So yes. if you allow me, Dr. I would like to share just a couple of slides about that, since Fatma has referred to it as part of the initiatives under the National Space Strategy. Yeah, I hope you can see the screen here. Yes. And so, as mentioned, one of the key initiatives that uh, Fatma referred to in the National Space Strategy Goal 5 is to develop a mechanism and to uh, take some action uh, and steps when it comes to space investment promotion. Uh, based on that uh, initiative, uh, the, the Space Agency has launched in 2019 the so-called Space Investment Promotion Plan. It's a national plan that aims to uh, uh, basically fill the gaps through uh, practical steps uh, that will increase uh, the, you know, the attractiveness to invest in space as well as uh, private uh, sector uh, to flourish and to uh, uh, enjoy uh, uh, good incentives uh, in working and conducting their business here in the UAE. There, there were two uh, main pillars that the Space Investment Promotion Plan uh, actually uh, discussed in order to reach that objective. Uh, number one is to create an attractive uh, environment for the space industry and ecosystem. And there are four activities, five activities actually, that were identified in here. Uh, the first one is to promote the awareness to the investors uh, about opportunities in investing in space and why investment in space and what are the type of return from you know, uh, economic perspective, uh, from also a strategic perspective. And the other side also of the awareness is to raise the awareness to the you know, space industry uh, and entrepreneurs about challenges and you know, uh, requirements uh, from the non-space sector or from the space sectors where they can provide their own innovative solutions and uh, grow uh, basically their potential clients. Uh, the second type of activity was about having an attractive regulatory framework, which Dr. Fathia is going to talk about more as well as uh, you know, uh, the team. And uh, the third uh, objective was actually to create a one-stop shop for licensing and settling business in space. And this is, I think, where Hamda is going to be uh, uh, talking about more when, when it comes to licensing. And as well as Ali when he's talking about export control. Uh, the other part was actually to establish partnership with economic uh, zones and to create economic zones with some incentives uh, for people uh, you know, and uh, international companies here to come where not necessarily the UAE law will apply, but rather you know, sometimes the English law as uh, whatever uh, you know, legislation that is there and applicable to that economic zones. And last but not least is looking for other incentives uh, you know, that basically attract uh, the business to come here. This could include you know, visa requirements, uh, sometimes waiver of, you know, um, uh, uh, expenditure related to health insurance. This can also be provided to entrepreneurs, uh, you know, facilities and space facility for the entrepreneurs to come and start their business, other incentives that are there. And we keep, of course, increasing that list. This is the first pillar, which is how we can create an attractive environment for space industry and ecosystem. On the other side, it was clear that, you know, there was a gap of what we call an investment vehicle. Uh, you know, to have some sort of uh, a platform to facilitate that investment. And with this, uh, it was clear for us in 2017 and 2018, when we are developing the National Space Investment Promotion Plan, that there were two key gaps that existed. 
Number one is that number or uh, almost majority of the space deals coming from uh, you know uh, companies in space or even entrepreneurs in space they were rejected and uh, also uh, early stage uh, proposals uh, also uh, were not even considered enough and when we uh, of course uh, uh, assist the, the the reason behind that we found that on the first side why most of the proposals that were coming from space they were rejected uh, we find that either these proposals were the right proposals but going to the wrong investors or uh, the proposals were not meeting the criteria or the even the format that the investors are expecting to receive these proposals and last but not least sometimes the investor uh, didn't know much about space there were some technicalities in terms of you know knowledge about space and space market so they actually that added to the risk that they're going to take and based on that, most of the, these proposals, they were rejected. Uh, on the other side, for the early stage, we're talking about pre-seed or a seed, you know, uh, ideas that they're looking for some sort of maybe angel investors. They were not considered because there were no space, uh, you know, incubators or no space accelerators, no space angels investors existed in place. And based on that, the Space Investment Promotion Plan put a clear action that we need to find a solution for this and try to fulfill these gaps uh, through what we call the uh, space agency catalyst or platform to facilitate the investment. And one of that is the Global Space Industry Accelerator where my colleague Hamda is going to introduce later. Thank you and I would like now to tackle the, one of the key activities that was mentioned in the Space Investment Promotion Plan which is Attractive Regulatory Framework. Dr. Fathia, thanks for your time and please, the floor is yours. As Nazan said, that um, I will be now uh, talking about the uh, how our law and space law and our regulation really uh, try to attract more investors. And what about the foreigners who want to come to the UAE and then have their 100% ownership for their companies? The first session will be about the space law and regulations. Here, I just will give you an overview and show you um, how many regulations do we have. As you can see here, we have the federal law number 12 of the regulating the space sector that was issued in 2019. And under that, we have around like uh, nine regulations, as you can see here. And in drafting such law and regulation, we really try to compromise between two things. On one hand, security, environment, sustainability of the space activities, and on the other hand, how can we make it uh, competitive and we can attract, uh, attract more investors to the UAE. So you can see here that we have several regulations. Uh, some of them already issued, some of them are almost uh, ready to be issued. The ones that are issued, for example, the regulation of the registration of space object, the human space flight activities regulation, and our federal law, the ones that are almost done, the registration of the aircraft, and the accident and incident investigations, authorization, a regulation of the space, uh, sorry, for the remote sensing, third party liability insurance, and the audit framework. We also have some of the guidelines, such as space debris mitigation guidelines, third party liability insurance on the space activities, and space uh, based remote sensing data policy guidelines for the UAE institutional missions. One of the main uh, objectives of our law is trying to promote investment and trying really to attract more private and academic sector to invest here in the UAE. I want here to highlight some of the subjects that are mentioned in our law. And I can say, honestly, maybe all of these subjects are, uh, has at least, uh, sorry, has a regulation, specific regulation for its uh, terms and conditions. For example, how did we um, 
make our human space flight activities uh, attractive, we simply encouraged or I mean guided the operator to how he can uh, prepare the astronaut to do a safe mission, which will um, lead to a sustainable space activity. Unlike other countries, we are here in UAE authorizing the exploration, exploitation, and the use of space resources because we are really supporting the innovation and the people who want to invest and uh, explore the outer space and use the resources for the scientific researches, for example. We also realized in UAE that space and nuclear power resources importance, especially for these space activities and the satellites. And therefore, we are obviously authorizing that. In doing so, there are like specific conditions. Uh, one of them is uh, the operator need just to tell us the condition, I mean, sorry, uh, the reason behind uh, using uh, such a uh, nuclear power resource. Specific mitigation, uh, mitigation is one of the very important uh, topics internationally. In our law, we stated uh, obviously uh, about it and we also uh, working on doing our guidelines. In this guidelines, we are supporting and uh, really uh, encouraging the operator to do their space DP mitigation, uh, uh, mitigation plan that will help him to um, protect his space uh, activity by not releasing more space debris in the environment. So he is obviously protecting the environment and also supporting the sustainability of the space activity, his own activity and, other ac and the other's activities as well. We have also uh, mentioned liability and limits determination and insurance. And more details about this will be given by my colleague Hamda in a little bit. Risk and crisis management, one of the also most important topics and we are supporting and also uh, asking the operator to provide us with a risk and crisis management plan that will help him to manage any crisis or risk, which also will lead to and help to support the sustainability of these space activities. We also supporting the operator through helping him in doing his investigation in the accident and incident that might uh, that occurred to prevent it from uh, again occurring in the future the ownership of the space uh, the foreign orange ownership of the uh, uh, foreigners for the space companies in 2020 uh, a resolution from the cabinet was released concerning the, the determination of the positive list of economic sector and activities eligible for foreign direct investment and percentage of their ownership. In this resolution, uh, the resolution actually uh, gave certain conditions, uh, terms and conditions that uh, will be applied to any foreigner who wants to own uh, his own company and investment and invest in the UAE 100% his own space activity. In that resolution, we had also a positive list of economic sectors and activities eligible for foreign direct investment. That list contains about uh, 122 activity for several uh, sectors, for example, agriculture and manufacturing. The Ministry of Economy also um, in 2020 released its foreign investor, investor guide that will help the foreigners 
and give them the requirements and the procedures to follow uh, to get the 100% ownership. In that positive list, we found that there is one specific activity related to space directly, and that one is the manufacture of air and spacecraft and related machinery. And we find that, that there are several uh, or general activities uh, listed that can be applied for space or any other uh, sector in, in the UAE, for example, uh, legal consultancy offices, scientific research and development, manufacture of uh, electronic equipment, and manufacture of the computer, electronic, and optical products. The agency is aiming or try to develop or develop a list of activities that it wishes to add to that said list. And some of these activities are the managing and operating satellites and providing satellite services, exploiting space resources, logistic services, operating space objects for space exploration and space uh, resources extraction missions, and research and development of space technologies and objectives. Thank you, thank you for your attention. And now I will pass it to Hamda. Thank you, Dr. Fathia. So as mentioned by my colleagues Nasser and Dr. Fathia, I would like to highlight that the UAE Space Agency has been working towards developing a flexible regulatory procedures to establish a balance between the economic and commercial requirements which encourage innovation and enable space entrepreneurs into the space economy on one hand as well as to drive the invest uh, as well as to ensure the requirements for security safety and environmental protection on the other hand as well as to drive investments and to promote the participation of the private sector in the space industry and to contribute towards um, diversification of the national economy First, I would like to introduce the framework of the authorization of space activities and other activities related to the space sector, which aims to regulate carrying out space activities in a safe and a secure ma ma manner, and to ensure the availability of appropriate coverage for the liability against damages that might be caused to a third party uh, from carrying out a space activity. In addition to set out the different categories and types of authorization and the regulatory procedures, including the applications and terms and conditions to obtain the authorization, which are customized based on a number of factors, including the nature of the entity, the extent of its maturity, and the nature of the activity to be authorized, and taking into account the probability and the impact of risk associated to the activities in which each case is evaluated separately during the authorization process. Um, we have four different categories of authorizations obtained, which are depending on the nature of the entity and the nature of activities to be authorized. Uh, one of them is the license, which is granted to uh, carry out space activity in order to provide commercial services and to achieve financial returns. The second type is approval, which is granted to governmental entities or academic researchers uh, without, uh, which are not intended to provide commercial services. And the third is the permit, which is an add-on to the main license on approval to do an additional space activity. And finally, we have the experimental permit, which is granted to conduct experimental or test activities uh, for specific space technology without providing any services or achieving any financial returns. In addition, uh, the agency may grant different types of authorizations to allow the operators to carry out specific space activities for several time or specific scope of activities without asking them to come each time to the agency and to make the authorization process easier and attractive for the operators. Um, and such, uh, the UAE Space Agency aims to be a one-stop shop for authorizing space activities in coordination with other relevant entities and to act as a facilitator to establish the space business and to operate space activities in the UAE. 
Hence, we have developed a simple authorization procedure, which, is, which consists out of two phases. The first phase is the pre-application phase, where the applicant submits the, introduction, uh, the introductory form and the relevant information about his uh, or her activity. The agency reviews the form and the application and uh, discuss the applicant all the requirements for the formal application. In addition, the UA Space Agency consults with other entities as required for approval purposes and to provide a no objection certificate to the applicants in order to apply for other approvals with other entities such as DRA for frequency allocations or DED and free zone for establishing the company. And this is an iterative process uh, between the applicant and the UA Space Agency where the applicant can ask questions and provide additional information and the agency provides clarifications and request additional information needed. And after getting all the information and the approvals required, the agency starts the formal application process with the applicants and review all the information and to make sure that they met the specific criteria and they submitted all the relevant, the relevant approvals needed. Uh, this process usually takes about one month in order to the formal authorization to be issued. And uh, one of the major requirements to obtain the authorization is to provide a third party liability coverage. And we are currently working on drafting the third party liability insurance regulation. As per the international obligations, uh, the UA space or the UA is liable for any damages that may occur to any third parties during space activities. And in order to minimize the liability from the state, providing third party liability insurance or equivalent guarantees is mandatory in order to obtain the authorization to perform space activities in the UAE. And the third party liability insurance uh, is designed to protect the launch providers and the satellite operators as well as other participants in the space activities against any financial consequences or damages caused to any third parties. Uh, this regulation is aimed to set out the terms and conditions to regulate the third party liability insurance activities for space activities and to estimate the compensation limits um, to the operators. Uh, so the agency has developed a dynamic calculation model in order to estimate the third party liability insurance requirements rather than flat rate to make it more attractive to the operators which is uh, tailor made for each space activities based on the input provided by the operators during the authorization process including the mission characteristics and parameters for each phase of for each phase of the space of operations, in addition, taking into consideration the insurance market. And the third party liability requirement calculation model has been created for the four main phases of space activities. Uh, in addition, the UA Space Agency provides incentives to facilitate the third party liability insurance requirements such as it may allow some operators to provide the liability, third party liability amount and less than the insurance amount or exempt them from it in some cases uh, evaluated by the agency. And the reason for that is to attract more space operators and to facilitate the, uh, the space operations in the UAE. Another uh, important aspect that contributes toward attracting space businesses in the UAE is to have a simple yet effective procedures for exports and imports on, on space related items that falls into controlled items category, which will be explained by, by my colleague Ali. Uh, thank you, Hamda. Uh, the UAE Space Agency have, have been aiming to have an easy and attractive regulator procedures uh, to attract the, business, uh, the space businesses and uh, investors to start up their uh, space activities within the UAE, in which uh, the industry uh, will increase the space, uh, the space sector's input within the UAE. The UAE uh, Space Agency has under its uh, law, the regulations of, uh, of space sector in Article 33, which uh, is on the exports and imports uh, regulations that the agency will establish and construct these regulations 
to the imports and uh, 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 to the imports and exports of all uh, uh, goods related to the space agency. Uh, we have been researching, uh, researching the international, uh, researching international and uh, local regulations and procedures on exports and imports to understand and uh, to understand the reasons of such uh, regulations and how we can uh, interpret them within the UAE's uh, uh, regulations. We've looked at uh, uh, international agencies like uh, National, uh, NASA and uh, Roscosmos and compared them with the recent agencies uh, to show how the development of exporting and importing, uh, importing has been uh, developing. Furthermore, we've looked at uh, local entities uh, and uh, such as the Federal Authority of Nuclear Regulations and Telecommunications uh, Regulations Authority and other entities to help us re uh, uh, reach a result that will develop uh, the UAE's regulations uh, in the UAE space, space sector. Uh, as well as we've uh, sent out sur uh, surveys to, uh, to these entities to have their point of view and help us understand the, uh, understand the areas where, where uh, we can improve. Uh, we are currently work, uh, working on setting the regulations as well as identifying the key roles that the agency will play in the exporting and importing of space related uh, items. And as well, uh, looking at uh, how dual use items will be regulated and uh, the procedures of uh, uh, ensuring uh, the, uh, the safety of the use. Uh, as well as we are cooperating with uh, the customs authorities and uh, the committee of uh, com commodities uh, j uh, subject to imports and exports uh, to construct these procedures. With the development of these procedures and services, the UAE Space Agency will open up doors for, new for all entities uh, to be able to import their items, uh, the items they need, sorry, and, uh, their, uh, and to practice their space exploration. Uh, and I'll hand it back to Hamda. Uh, Thank you, Ali. Uh, so now I would like to move to another topic, which falls under the umbrella of the National Space Investment Promotion Plan. So the UAE Space Agency has launched two programs in collaboration with Crypto Labs, which aims to nurture uh, a sustainable space industry and to foster a healthy national ecosystem through innovation and R&D. In 2019, the UAE Space Agency uh, has launched the Geotech Innovation Program as a pilot incubation program for innovation space, innovative space ideas. It aims to accelerate the growth of high potential startups and developing space applications and solutions using satellite data and the following categories, including urban, uh, urban and rural management, crisis and disaster management, and coastal border security categories and to transform their innovative ideas into commercially viable, scalable, and market-ready products and services. And in 2020, the UAE Space Agency has launched, uh, in cooperation with Crypto Labs, the Global Space Industry Accelerator, or as we like to call it, the GSIA Initiative, which adds further value building on the Geotech Innovation Program experience by focusing on selected area from science, technology, and innovation roadmap. Uh, it aims at fostering a healthy and sustainable ecosystem with the groundbreaking startups that would disrupt the industry and position the UAE as a pioneering country on the global innovation map. And it is designed to provide the necessary support for entrepreneurs and startups in the space industry in alignment with the national objectives. So the GSIA includes a comprehensive framework that includes a venture builder with a focus of commercialization of space technology and space accelerator and investment fund that supports the growth of the startups. In addition to space IP study and non-space industry challenges survey. 
So uh, this is slide summarized the GSIA operating model in which ideas are integrated and moved into an innovation pipeline in order to grow into startups with external support from our stakeholders and internal support from the agency and crypto labs. So uh, the GSIA framework covers the value chain of entrepreneurship and innovation from ideation to growth to maximize the value added for all beneficiaries and to ensure the high impact and returns. And as part of the GSIA framework, the UAE Space Agency has launched the new space innovation program in collaboration with Crypto Labs, in which the business ideas were categorized based on the STI roadmap into three different categories, including innovations in space sciences, extending human presence in deep space, and exploration and communication in space. And uh, the selection criteria for the teams were based on different um, aspects, including the novelty, innovation, impact, scalability, and one uh, main um, criteria element is to have one Emirati per each team. And uh, the, the program had several steps, including the applications, the next it has a two days competition in order to filter the applications. Uh, these uh, uh, ideas or teams has been into a space boot camp, and we have graduated four uh, startups to fall into the incubation and acceleration program and next to the angel pitch demo day. And uh, finally, we have graduated four startups in which are Star Sense and Sky Green Tech, Sarsat Arabia and Eagle Eye 71. Uh, the following indicators were used to measure the program performance, including the number of received applications, and as we have received over 150 applications, and a uh, number of incubated and accelerated as, uh, entrepreneurship and startups, a uh, number of established startups, a uh, number of space investment deals closed, and the growth of foreign direct investment in the space startups, and finally, the number of space and non-space entities benefiting from the established startups. And finally, innovation needs resilience. And due to COVID-19, we were successfully able to transfer the GSIA program from a physical program uh, into a full virtual program, as we had a series of online events, mentorship sessions, and webinars with high number of attendees as this challenge turned the program into an opportunity to involve higher number of participants from nationally and internationally. And uh, now I'll move to Hanan in order to take up. Thank you. Thank you, Hamdo. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about awareness and partnerships and the international collaboration that we have done under the GSIA and the UAE New Space uh, Innovation. The first one uh, is the awareness and the partnership. So during the implementation of the Global Space Industry Accelerator for this year, we launched a series of awareness campaigns and we created strategic partnerships with leading entities from the public, the private and the academic care sectors. Of course, the main partnership was between the UE Space Agency and us as Crypto Labs. The purpose of this collaboration was first to scout and reach out to talent. And that was mainly for the program, the UE New Space Innovation Program, which is the incubation program. And second was to position the space industry as a key component for not only space, but also space related and non space industries. And the, under this component, we did uh, a survey for industry challenges. We wanted to reach out to all the stakeholders out, out there and understand how space could cater for them. How could we provide applications, solutions for them? and then to identify the space IP in the UAE. And for that, that we wanted to create different uh, innovation programs that could cater to potentially commercialize those space IP. And uh, last but not least, mapping the national and the international uh, space landscapes to understand the clear vision of who are the main uh, key players. Under the scouting and the reach out to talent, we conducted 13 roadshows at uh, the local universities. We had over 300 participants. We also partnered with the Abu Dhabi DED and reached out to over 44,000 entrepreneurs around the UAE. We held four webinars with over 1,000 uh, attendees in partnership with our main uh, strategic uh, partners like the DED, Khalifa Fund, the ICT Fund, Hub 71, Dubai Economy, Ministry of Economy, 
uh, ESA, PWC, and the RSC, and the NSTC in the UAE University in Milan. We also held different uh, online campaigns. We sent direct emails, we used Google ads, social media. Uh, we made sure that the media was there to provide media exposure for the startups and the campaign itself. We, uh, under the uh, industry challenges, we held an executive workshop with 51 experts uh, from the industry, from public, private, academia, and representatives of the startups to not only uh, present the project for them, but also to receive their feedback. We held one-on-one -on -one, uh, 23 meetings with them to understand the challenges that they are facing and how space could uh, address them and uh, bridge that gap. And we also uh, held different uh, online campaigns from direct email to Google to social media. And also we designed uh, designated online surveys for both the industry challenges and for the space IP. Under the space IP, we also have uh, created a partnership with the Ministry of Economy to identify all the patents, the copyrights and the industry designs that exist in here. Um, under mapping uh, the national and the international uh, landscape, we wanted to understand what are the uh, initiatives out there, what are the programs that are held within the industry, whether from, government, from the government, from the public sector, uh, sorry, the private sector. Uh, we wanted to understand which networks existed in there and who are the partners, the stakeholders that we should approach to, to support us with each different uh, component. I'm going to show you a few pictures of, uh, this is from the roadshow, the one to the left with Khalifa University, a few of our webinars and some of the uh, media exposure for our startups and the project itself. And of course, the international collaboration, uh, as uh, my colleague Hamda uh, stressed out that uh, the GSIA is a framework and it's, uh, it's going to be executed over the years, so it's all for 2020, 2021 and so on. So we needed the international collaboration so we could promote entrepreneurship and innovation in space. Uh, for example, I'm going to give the two here, the European Space Agency and the Luxembourg Space Agency, of course, among uh, others. And that would be the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hanan. Uh, thank you all for this uh, uh, comprehensive, uh, uh, let me say, slides and information. Uh, there is a clear, uh, I think, uh, message that we get in here is that uh, sustainable uh, space economy is a journey. It's not uh, a destination. It uh, for sure requires um, clear partnership strategy uh, at, uh, as we mentioned earlier, at uh, the intersector between the different uh, sec space uh, industry players from the government from the private sector, from the academies and research, um, but also with other sectors, non-space, with agriculture, with uh, transportation, with aviation, with telecommunications uh, and logistic services and food security. Uh, the potential clients uh, and potential utilizer of these space applications to understand their needs and at the same time be able to contribute and enable their business activities. It's also very clear that uh, in regional partnership and international partnership, it's important. Space projects are meant to be regional and global by nature. Uh, people uh, usually would, uh, you know, launch their satellite services and, you know, uh, conduct the space activities for much bigger scale than just national needs. So that international partnership and collaboration is essential. Uh, I think to have a legal framework that try to balance as mentioned earlier by Dr. Fathiya, between the safety needs uh, taking into account the change that is happening in the space environment from you know, uh, debris, from frequency interference, and also cyber threats, just like other sectors. It requires, of course, uh, to take this into consideration. But how at the same time we allow a sector that is based in innovation like space sector to also flourish? and how we can attract more commercialization and privatization. So it's very delicate and it's a learning journey to, uh, to actually be able to provide that, uh, you know, uh, le legal and regulatory framework that is able to balance between those two, uh, you know, two dimensions, the safety from one side, stability from one side, as well as the business and commercialization and innovation from the other side. 
Um, also to um, to uh, back to uh, Hamda and uh, uh, point about uh, you know the the one stop shop. Uh, it is indeed uh, you know many of the uh, you know when we do a study and look at you know other uh, you know uh, countries, and many of the uh, space agencies didn't focus much into the licensing part and probably other bodies used to do that. But today we learn from the industry that they would like to go to one place to discuss all various aspects related to, play, to, to space. And space agency could be uh, more suited for that. And uh, we capture that requirement from you know, the industry. And we try to do this with great collaboration with other authorities here in the UAE that are relevant to the licensing regime. Uh, same thing also uh, export and import control. I think, uh, you know, a lot of the technologies for a developing program just like here in the UAE would require technologies from outside. So how can we have assurance uh, for proper imports requirements? But in the future, you know, when there are some technologies developed, how we also assure a proper export of these? So that is something that is also very important. Um, we're also working with other uh, government sectors as mentioned by Dr. Fathiya in terms of the, you know, the 100% ownership, uh, you know, programs and other incentives to attract foreign direct investment in space. Um, that is actually, uh, you know, something that is continually ongoing. Uh, and of course, it's not a space a specific, but we need to be part uh, of the overall picture in here. Uh, what's mentioned by uh, Fatma Al-Shamsi about the follow-up and uh, you know the progress in terms of implementing the national space strategy is very crucial. Um, uh, she talked about the governance, and uh, and it's very very important to to realize from day one while you are drafting your strategy, you're drafting in parallel how you're going to govern it, um, because uh, to come up with ambitious initiatives uh, that of course based on the global trends and the capabilities that exist in your country is definitely a, a challenging uh, task. But the most challenging part is to really ensure that these objectives are being implemented. And the KPIs that you have in there are realistic and are being met. Uh, and there is a whole uh, learning journey that uh, we're going through in terms of how we can encourage the implementation, how we can coordinate and focus that implementation to the priority uh, of the initiatives that are exist. And at the same time, to create some sort of uh, partnership that avoid uh, unnecessary duplications and increase augmentation and integration of the different entities and industries' plans in implementing the national space strategy. Uh, these are all different components that, in the end, lead to one objectives that we mentioned earlier. That is how we can uh, accelerate the sustainable growth in the space sector uh, here in the UAE. Uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to any of my colleagues if they would like to add or make any further comments before we bring this session to an adjoint. So please, any of you, if you'd like to add any further comments. Uh, thank you, Nasser. It's uh, one thing I would uh, just add that uh, it's, it's amazing to see the space sector growing, especially in, in within entrepreneurship and innovation, to see the space agency uh, sponsoring uh, projects so that we can get uh, more and more startups every year and uh, hopefully for the future to see, to see uh, UAE as a hub for innovation, for startups, for uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fernand. Okay, so if there is no other comments, I do have a couple, uh, in a couple of also key comments that I take from Hanan's point. One is about uh, what she highlighted in terms of awareness and the importance of awareness. And uh, no matter how many times people in the space sector and industry, they think that or they believe that other sectors and probably other, you know, uh, industries or even investors are aware of the opportunities in space. I think there's a lot of work to be done in there. And awareness is a key enabler and it has been always identified as number one enabler, whether in our national space policy or the national space strategy as mentioned by Fatma earlier. 
The second point I would like uh, to mention is that uh, I think what we've uh, tried to do here in the UAE Space Agency and the space industry in partnership with Crypto Labs and other partners like ICT Fund and DED and uh, Khalifa Fund and all those who supported us in doing the GSIA, the Global Space Industry Accelerator Program, uh, what we've learned is not it's not about numbers. What, what, what we've learned is that you want to make sure you start right. Uh, we uh, didn't target having 50 startups or 20 startups. We wanted to target two last year in the pilot, four this year, but get it right as much as possible. Make sure that they are responding to uh, needs here in the market. They have potential in terms of scalability and so on. And I think as we learn, this number can increase. So it is really how we should probably, or how we learn to focus on the quality first before the quantity and then grow the quantity as you go uh, based on the lessons learned based on the platform and a framework that you've created later on you can grow it can you graduate larger number with the same quality so this is something to to highlight as well with this if there is no further comments i would like to thank all the speakers you deserve all uh, applause for sharing all this thank you information thank you, and uh, we believe this is uh, just a UAE experience on how we've approached it. And we are happy to engage with other participants during the IEC Cyber Edition to learn about their experiences as well as their feedback and ours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.